Okay, welcome back from uh, lunch, everybody. Cookies are good. Uh, my name's uh, Bill Hollings. I, uh, I'm uh, the lead developer on uh, Molten VK. I maintain the repository. Uh, and um, and uh, um, coordinate activities there. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, Molten VK and Vulkan Portability. Uh, two, they're, they're two topics, but they're highly uh, related. I'm going to talk about the product, Molten VK. Um, I saw references to it uh, a number of times in the presentations this morning, so clearly a number of you, or a few of you at least, are familiar with it. Um, and then I'm going to talk about uh, uh, Vulkan Portability, and then we'll talk a little bit about, and I'd like to get some feedback on uh, future directions. Okay. Uh, my company is the Brenwell Workshop Limited, um, and I'll get into, uh, into that as well. Now, let's see if I can figure this out. Okay. So first topic is Molten BK. Um, basically, for those who don't know what Molten BK is, it's uh, Vulkan uh, API over the Metal uh, framework on running on Apple products, um, uh, Mac OS and iOS and tvOS. Okay, a little bit of history of Molten BK. Um, Brenwell's been around for a while uh, as a consulting company. Uh, we got into the gaming industry about 12 years ago, put together a, uh, um, uh, a game engine uh, based on OpenGL uh, ES2. Uh, well, started with one, but then migrated it to uh, about 12 years ago, 11 years ago. Um, written in Objective-C, it was targeted for iOS. Um, that's the reason we got into the game uh, business because we were interested in producing an iOS game when back when when iOS was brand spanking new. Uh, then um, Apple introduced uh, Metal in 2014, uh, and we started getting requests on our game engine. You know, when are you guys going to support Metal? And looking at the back end. Uh, very tightly coupled to uh, OpenGL uh, uh, ES2. It was also connected to a, a third-party product called Cocos 2D. Um, so we didn't have complete control over everything. You guys can hear me okay? Okay, sorry, I thought you were waving to me. Um, so we, uh, we took the approach of saying, well, rather than write a, 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 a different backend, why don't we just throw a layer in underneath that... Uh, translates uh, OpenGL ES2 calls into uh, into uh, Metal. So very similar to what Angle did um, uh, before that, but a uh, similar kind of thing, but this time on Metal. Uh, then uh, very soon, shortly after that, uh, Vulcan was introduced, and it was just very clear that we should uh, you know, also support this, uh, this new fancy backend as well, or... Um, uh, using similar kind of constructs, but basically taking the experience we had in developing Molten GL and um, and rolling it into to supporting uh, Molten, uh, sorry, uh, Vulcan on top of uh, Metal. Uh, Molten GL uh, still exists. It's sold as a licensed product. Um, a lot of since uh, Apple sunsetted. Uh, sorry for the uh, ums. Since Apple sunsetted OpenGL on its products. Uh, there's been quite a bit of interest in, from uh, game developers who are interested in maintaining their, uh, their existing OpenGL games. And as you guys know, uh, old habits die hard, so OpenGL is still gonna be around for a while, even though uh, Apple is, uh, is not really supporting it very well anymore. Uh, that engine was written in Objective-C. When we moved over to supporting Vulkan, we rewrote or built the engine for Molten BK uh, on C++ because that is the, uh, uh, with Vulkan being a, a, a C-based uh, API and games are typically built uh, in C++, uh, we decided to focus in on that. That was actually a, a, a good decision. Uh, moving forward a couple of years, uh, Valve got very interested in uh, Molten VK and started funding some development. Uh, so we worked for a couple of years with Valve on uh, enhancing Molten BK, uh, using it to underlie uh, a couple of games there. And um, then we got into discussions uh, 
to uh, about the benefits of open sourcing. So Valve got interested in not only the product, but also in open sourcing the product. So they funded uh, transferring uh, Molten BK from a licensed product, which it was before then, to a, an open source product. That was released under Kronos. So Kronos has been uh, supporting Molten BK from a, from a uh, uh, function, uh, not from a uh, you know publicity and and industry perspective, as well uh, since then. So right now or since 2018, Molten VK is a an open source product under Kronos. Uh, the the uh, it's under the uh, the GitHub is under the Kronos uh, Kronos Group uh, environment on GitHub. Uh, Code Weavers also got uh, interested in it um, about the same time, a little later on in 2018, and started uh, in some of the porting that they were doing, uh, started contributing quite a bit of code to uh, to the Molten VK repository. So that's a little bit of the history. Uh, here's kind of a this is a really messy, complicated slide, um, but it just sort of shows again a little bit of the history from that June sort of introduction. Um, Code Weavers getting involved a little later in the in the in their uh, Valve. Uh, we we released uh, Dota 2 uh, a little later on. Valve also did an iOS game, uh, and then there's been a number of uh, developers uh, uh, in, interested and involved in uh, in this. Okay, so the current status of MolenBK is. It supports Vulkan 1.2 right now. That was just actually uh, came out in the last couple of weeks. Uh, so we're now up to 1.2 plus uh, a number of extensions. Uh, it's embedded in the macOS Vulkan SDK that Lunar G puts out. It's a key component of the Vulkan portability initiative. So actually Molten VK uh, really catalyzed the concept of how, does, how do we support Vulkan on platforms where the underlying uh, platform doesn't necessarily isn't able to be conformant with uh, uh, like full-blown Vulcan, uh, and so the Vulcan Portability Initiative, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute, uh, was created to um, to figure out ways to uh, support the industry in having uh, Vulcan in environments like Metal or other platforms where. Um, where it wasn't uh, possible to become completely Vulcan conformant. In that vein, we're currently undergoing an extensive uh, ongoing activities to reduce CTS failures. For those of you who don't know, uh, CTS is Kronos's Vulcan and OpenGL uh, test suite. Uh, there's about a little over a million uh, CTS uh, tests for Vulcan. Uh, and basically to be conformant, you have to have zero failures uh, on, not necessarily on all the million, but all of the, whatever proportion of that you are supposed to support. Okay, so ideally we want to get down to zero. That's not actually possible because uh, Metal uh, doesn't support all of the functionality uh, that, uh, that uh, Vulkan needs. Um, so it's never going to be possible to get to zero. So the Vulcan Portability Initiative is a mechanism that we use to define sort of a second tier of conformance, and I'll get into that a little bit more uh, later on. Uh, other improvements come from bug reports and enhancement requests that you all put out on the uh, on the Vulcan GitHub, uh, the Molten BK, sorry, GitHub repository. So uh, keep those coming. There are definitely some stuff here, and I'll talk about that towards the end. Uh, the graph on the right is from Karen. Um, they do a regular uh, poll of, uh, of people in the industry, and this is a couple of years old, but it's showing that, um, as we all know, by far and away, uh, desktop Windows is the lead in terms of uh, developer interest. But the combination of Mac OS and iOS is actually still pretty significant. So a lot of developers, game developers, are viewing Mac and iOS as a uh, an important platform to be able to support. Okay, I'll talk about a little bit about the Vulcan Portability Initiative. Here's uh, an incredibly dense slide. Uh, what it's doing is it sort of summarizes the state of 
layering. So uh, the left hand is, sorry, the, the right hand is the API, right hand, the top uh, dimension where we go a uh, Vulkan, OpenGL, et cetera, uh, horizontally. That indicates the platform that I want to start from. That's the API that I want to write, use to write my game. And then following that big red arrow on the left, the platform that I'm going to actually support it on is on the left. So you can see Molten BK is down in the bottom there, going from Vulkan to Metal. Uh, we also have OpenGL ES there, Molten GL and Angle going from OpenGL to Metal. Uh, Angle also obviously goes from OpenGL to Open OpenGL ES to OpenGL. Uh, the uh, a lot of you are familiar with the top right there, going from DX12 or DX9 to Vulkan. A uh, couple of presentations this morning about that. And surprisingly, there's some interesting ones. Um, there's Zinc, which goes from OpenGL to Vulkan. Uh, there's um, where is it going from? Vulcan to oh ashes yeah ashes going from Vulcan to OpenGL, which is even a more bizarre concept than going from Vulcan to to metal. Um, so this is a kind of a summary. There's a lot of activity going on in the industry with regards to you know platform uh, viability and platform support, cross-platform support. The portability subset uh, extension is a product of that portability initiative that I was talking about, or that I am talking about. And the idea here is to identify where a platform will be non-conformant. So for instance, Metal does not support triangle fans. So if you're using triangle fans in your game, it's going to break. And we uh, identify that by having an extension that has a structure, and in that structure it has a series of flags. So it's very similar to the Vulcan uh, feature flags, but they're actually reverse flags. They're actually flags that indicate we don't support this, we don't support this, we don't support that. So right now there's about uh, a dozen flags. Um, that list is kind of growing because as we crank away at reducing the CTS, we find the CTS tests failures. We find when we find oh, this just, we cannot pass this test no matter what magic we do in Molten VK or Spear V Cross or anything like that. Uh, we cannot do it because molten, uh, Metal doesn't support it. Then we, we add a flag to that structure. And at, once we get those tests down to zero, we'll have a definitive uh, set of flags that say, you know, if you're running Vulcan 1.0 or 1.1, you know, here are, the, here are the things that you may or may not be able to support on any particular platform. Okay. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Uh, it depends on, uh, and so for instance, depending on how far you go back on iOS or uh, Mac OS, um, you know, sometimes you're going to support it, sometimes you're not. And it depends on the GPU as well, obviously. Okay, so that's a way of uh, allowing a game or an app to query what are the actual capabilities of this non-conformant uh, platform in order to, uh, th that I know it will be conformant on, at least. Okay, now I want to talk about uh, the future. Um, we get requests both from DXVK and VK3D to, uh, to add features. Um, so here's a current list of requests that we have to add extensions in this case. Um, some of them are possible, some of them are not. Uh, There's quite a bit of talk about memory mapping earlier, uh, which I'm very interested in. Um, so this is the current list of requests from DXVK, and for those of you who are working in that environment, uh, by all means, please add to the uh, list. There's, a, there's an issue specifically for uh, uh, DXVK requests. And similarly for VKD3D, there is uh, a set of requests come in as well. Uh, so these again, once again, are you know please support these Vulcan extensions um, because we we you know we we need them for for various uh, games that we're we're working on. Okay, and again, uh, there's a uh, an issue on Molten BK. So if you have if you're working on a port or developing a game and you're finding it's not working here. Uh, then um, by all means, you know, say, oh, I need you to support this extension or this extension's broken or whatever. 
And finally, we got a bunch of requests about uh, Metal 3, so I thought I'd just say a few words about Metal 3. Um, Metal 3, uh, it's a significant uh, extension. Uh, one thing it, it critically added was bu uh, buffer device address, so we can now do things like support the buffer device address extension, so you can pass pointers into, uh, uh, into um, the shaders. Uh, also, uh, there's uh, the, related to that is a redefinition of how they handle uh, metal argument buffers, and that is going to allow us to improve our, our um, behavior of, of indexing support, descriptor indexing support. They introduced uh, mesh shaders and uh, enhanced ray tracing. I, sh I didn't write that down, but I should. Uh, they recommend, Apple recommends that geometry shaders and faster tessellation shaders can be accomplished by, uh, by using mesh shaders if the platform supports mesh shaders, obviously. So their, their strategy there is to, uh, is to just say, like, mesh shaders are the future. So rather than provide specifically geometry support, uh, geometry shader support, uh, we're going to provide you with mesh shaders. And so it would be up to us to, to uh, munge that into uh, effective geometry shader support. Uh, tessellation shaders, uh, for those of you who do use those, you'll have probably noticed that they don't perform particularly well on on um, in molten BK, and the reason for that is because the metal, the way that metal does tessellation shaders is su sufficiently different than the way Vulcan does it, and the impedance mismatch there causes uh, a fair bit of switching between compute shaders and and rendering shaders. Okay, and I believe that is the end of my presentation. Yes, um, so that's where we are. That's sort of a history. Uh, the relationship between Molten BK and uh, the Vulcan Portability Initiative, and a little bit about where we want to go with uh, with uh, support for D3D activities. Uh, so I'm very interested to get feedback. Um, you can either talk to me directly, or my brain is I'm I'm not going on a lot of sleep right now. So rather than rely on me to remember things, you know, please by all means contact me. Contribute to the uh, the issue list on Molten BK if you've got specific things you want to discuss. But uh, but I can take some questions now. If anybody's got anything. So, uh, yeah, so triangle fans in particular, uh, clearly they, oh, I'm sorry. Um, if I can summarize, what's the support uh, for, from Apple for uh, activities that we're doing? We do have a relationship with Apple. Uh, it is, uh, as we all do, um, they are, they are interested in being competitive, uh, so they are interested in what Vulcan is doing. That's not to say they're committed to stay even. Um, clearly something like Triangle Fans, yeah. Uh, OpenGL now runs on top of Metal. Uh, so why, well, you know, clearly Metal can support Triangle Fans at some, or maybe the driver's doing a copy, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's not publicly available. Um, Apple is, very proprietary, as we all know. Um, they are interested and will dialogue, but they're, and we can certainly file as many radars and, and requests and things like that, um, but they, they, they steer their own ship. Um, so it's not, uh, I, I can't say they're gonna be, you know, extremely responsive. Um, they want to know, like for instance, you know, the introducing mesh shaders. Oh, surprisingly, it came out, you know, just after mesh shaders were introduced everywhere else. So they're interested in being macro level, com you know, uh, uh, not compatible, uh, competitive, um, because they've got, you know, people like Unreal and Valve and whatever uh, hammering them, saying, you know, if you want us to write games for your platform, we need these features. Uh, they're not necessarily going to say oh, well, let's make it exactly compatible with Vulkan, right? That's not there because they've got their own, you know, their own marketing spin on that. So, yes, yeah, so, the, the, you know, the summary there is, yes, there is, there is interest but not commitment. Yep. 
Yeah, right now, sorry, the, the question was, um, uh, are there other platforms that uh, Vulcan portability would be, would be helpful for? Yes, uh, Android is an obvious one. Um, Android is kind of sits in the middle uh, where they're, they're trying to be conformant but not entirely conformant with, with Vulkan and they, there's some exceptions there. They're closer because they've got control of the drivers and things like that. Uh, but that would be an example of potentially uh, doing that. There's also, um, you know, uh, down the road consoles or something like that uh, where potentially um, there's, uh, there's a, a, you know, inability to, to, to be fully conformant. Uh, I think once we get this going, it's possible that it creates, there, there are just <clears throat> um, other uh, things that come out that, you know, maybe this Windows machine or this GPU or whatever uh, that, that could, could apply as well. Um, does that mean a fragmentation potentially? Um, but at least it, it's an open fragmentation. It's, it's saying, you know, Hey, we're telling you where we are, you know, we, where we can't be conformant here. We're upfront about it. You can query it in an API and adjust your code path accordingly. Uh, but right now, yeah, uh, MolenBK is really sort of 99% of what's happening on the portability initiative. I'll give the back a turn. I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the question. Am I in contact with the metal graphics developers, you mean? Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, reverse engineering so, for what? So the answer is no, I'm not in contact with them. Um, which initiative would you? Okay, there, okay. You're in contact. What are you doing with it? Okay, so writing a Linux driver for the Apple GPU. Okay, okay. So, well, nice that we're dialoguing now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that that that's an interesting initiative. Yeah, if there's um, if there's uh, I'm just trying to think where there'd be overlap there, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely worth uh, at least dialoguing about what's going on with Metal. Yeah. You think you could get down to a native Vulcan driver on an Apple platform? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we have been very religious on MultiBK about not using private APIs. Uh, Mac OS, it would be feasible. Um, not possible at all on iOS. One of the things when you submit an, an app to the iOS, to the uh, App Store, uh, one of the first things that checks is are you using uh, private APIs? We actually got, uh, a couple of years ago, we got uh, hit with that because we were using an API that was public now, but if you go back uh, a generation on iOS, it was private, even though it was the same footprint. 
Um, and so people were getting rejected, like because they said, oh, we also support, say, whatever it was, iOS 10, um, their apps were getting rejected, where somebody who said, oh, I only support back as far as iOS 11, they weren't getting rejected because it was now a public API. So we got hit, so we know for sure that uh, Apple very, is very diligent about, about not allowing that on the iOS uh, environment. Um, however, Mac obviously is a little more free range, and so it's it's potentially a, something we could consider. We've actually had requests for that. We resist it because you know we don't necessarily want to create fragmentation, and the environments for them are generally kind of low key. You're not going to get you know huge chunks of behavior. Maybe a little bit more conformance. That's about it. But I'd be interested in having a dialogue. So. Let's swap some contact information. Uh, you mean the code going faster? Or you mean development going faster? Uh, so, um, uh, well, manpower uh, or person power. Um, right now, uh, I'm doing uh, almost all of the uh, Molten BK development. Uh, I'm the, the only one that's sort of dedicated to it. Uh, there are contributors. Uh, you guys were contributing substantially over the last couple of years, as I pointed out there. Um, also, uh, game developers, users uh, will contribute code uh, in bits and pieces. Um, so yeah, so extra resources would, uh, would definitely be uh, uh, allow us. So we're currently at 1.2. Uh, Vulcan 1.2. Uh, the industry is at 1.3. Uh, there's about a two-year lag there. Uh, 1.3 is a big chunk of work. Uh, we're gonna, you know, obviously we keep at it, um, but uh, yeah, we're always gonna lag. I'd like to be in a position where we could actually have the Apple platform uh, still under the portability initiative, but being able to contribute to the Vulcan as it's being as it's evolving and not always just playing catch up. So uh, having uh, you know some extra resources would allow us to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I... <laughs> okay, <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah, no, I was uh, I was amazed with uh, uh, the presentation just before lunch um, because yeah, there's a lot of a lot of messiness there, and that's an example of you know Apple basically going its own way and we've, we've all got to uh, to uh, double our efforts to catch up and yeah that's a that's a hard nut to crack so I totally totally understand that especially with introducing introduction of Apple Silicon um, that's uh, that's definitely uh, puts us all a little further behind the complexity uh, wagon Uh, so Spear B Cross, um, uh, yeah, there's performance overhead um, because you're going from Spear B, Spear B to uh, metal shading language uh, at a source code level, and then you're going to a compilation phase. Um, so there's definitely it's more expensive than just going straight from Spear B to uh, to um, to you know native shaders. Um, the uh, so it so it affects your pipeline creation time. Uh, there's a number of initiatives going on right now in Vulcan to shorten pipelines in general, cache them, uh, pipeline library extensions that we are aiming to support uh, as best we can um, to try to uh, make it easier to to link together uh, uh, Vulcan libraries. Um, so that you're still going to get hit with that that exchange, but uh, the idea is uh, there at least you've got it more under control. Uh, so we we are not doing any specific magic. We do support um, uh, pipeline caches. Uh, right now, it's at a source code level. So, for instance, we'll if you save a pipeline cache in uh, in molten BK right now, what it spits out is uh, MSL code. So you you avoid that Spear V uh, 
to MSL translation next time you load the pipeline in. And uh, But when they've now introduced binary archives, so we're exploring how to, uh, we'll rewrite that so you can actually spit the whole uh, pipeline out uh, from a caching perspective. And on the, on the pipeline creation side where you can, again, use this concept of pipeline libraries, create one for the, sh one for the um, you know, uh, vertex stage, one for the uh, fragment stage, and then mush them together when you need them. Um, we're exploring that right now. So that's actually one of the extensions that we're working on right now. Again, there's a there's impedance there because Apple they have a different set of requirements for supporting that. So we're trying to you know jimmy a square peg into a round hole to a certain extent, but uh, we're still exploring that. In terms of performance, the shader itself uh, it's pretty good. Uh, there's a Spear V. There's a lot of impedance uh, there in terms of uh, syntax, but uh, Metal uh, Apple's compiler is pretty good. So once you do, like they'll they'll take out a lot of stuff that uh, is overhead uh, in the translation. So the the actual shaders do pretty well in terms of runtime performance. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so uh, thank you very much for listening to me. Um, and if I encourage anybody who's working in this segment of the industry and using Molten BK uh, on the D3D stuff in particular, I would like, I'm, I'm actually very grateful you invited me along here because uh, it's nice to get sort of a lot more context around this. And I would love to be able to uh, be more responsive in terms of hey, there's this actual real thrust about around D3D support. Um, there's a bunch of Vulkan extensions that we could potentially uh, imp uh, implement that would, you know, would help that along. Uh, so anything uh, that comes up, please, by all means, uh, put it on the issues list, uh, you know, and we'll try to try to get a real solid focus around uh, the whole D3D stuff. That's a big part of our whole industry. Okay, thanks a lot.